Hi, everybody. My name is Richard Hinton, and I am with the Department of Geography at the George Washington University. And OSM was first introduced to our GIS curriculum by my colleague, Dr. Nula Cowan, just before I joined the department in 2012, early 2012. And in 2013, at the State Conference in uh, San Francisco, we presented on the work we had been doing over the last couple of years with OSM in our, in part, as part of our GIS curriculum. And this was the first slide that we used in that presentation. So I thought, well, let's bring it back. Let's dust it off and bring it back again, because I think Dr. Seuss was sort of ahead of his time and perhaps a providing a bit of uh, foreshadowing with showing the cat in the hat with a map on his lap. Because of course, nowadays, we all have maps on our lap in the form of digital maps in our devices. And if you're like me, you have many applications on your device, on your mobile device, that, um, that have mapping capabilities or have maps associated with them. A lot of those applications actually have their digital map data informed by or pulled directly from OSM. So there is a definite connection and the cat in the hat, I think, was right to have a map on his lap. So we originally sort of got started with OSM because um, if we saw it as a great tool to not only teach geography, but have our students engage with geography and geospatial data in a very intimate and very engaging, uh, very real, real, very real way. So this was shortly after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. So the profile and the recognition of OSM had been growing. The community was growing. Its use cases, how people were adapting it and using it was growing. So we wanted to make sure we sort of got in with this and were sort of involved with it relatively early on. It also allowed us to approach the concept of open or bring the concept of open data, open, uh, open geospatial software into our curriculum a little more thoroughly. And OSM was a great platform uh, to do that. Our first couple of mapping events were um, very much labor intensive. This is before ID. And so when Nula introduced this to her first couple of classes, it was with the intermediate GIS class, so students who had some in, uh, knowledge of GIS and geospatial sort of skills, as it were. But we still had to identify an area, um, and then we had to find a way to divide it up and give it to the students and allocate students certain tasks to actually work on. And then students, we trained them in JOSM because ID hadn't been created yet, um, would use JOSM and go back and forth between different platforms to identify the area they were mapping and then ne negotiate where their cell ended and the next one started. And it was a very much just sort of a manual process. So we um, created these posters that as a student would finish tracing in a particular area, they would put a little sticker, a little dot sticker on the, on the map and then would show the progress of the actual project for the entire class and the others are actually using the lab as well. So that worked out pretty well, but still very labor intensive. This was that mapping event we used for that particular project, actually. Again, just the one intermediate GIS class and lots and lots of pizza. Now, of course, we're actually using ID. And because we're using ID, we actually introduced OSM at the intro level. And instead of having one intermediate class, we have three intro classes every single semester. So we've more than tripled the number of students we introduced to OSM each semester. And of course, our mapping events have gotten much larger. And of course, that also means our pizza budget has gone up significantly. Over the years, we've uh, had the pleasure to work with a number of great agencies and organizations that are for, um, that work in the DC area and in the sort of humanitarian um, sphere. And we've also had the pleasure and are very thankful for that when we do partner with a particular agency on disaster preparedness, on disease prevention, on disaster relief, whatnot, um, the more often than not, one of the member, perhaps more than a member, more than one of the members of that particular agency will come and talk to our students. And that really helps with um, engaging the students and giving them some context as to what it is they're doing. And that really sort of adds some gravity so that they understand, okay, it's not just boxes and lines I'm drawing on some, for, on some foreign land. Um, those, those data will actually be used, and this is how they'll be used and how they'll have an impact. So it really re resonates with the students a lot. So we're very thankful to be able to work with all these organizations in different capacities. Okay, so over the last 10 years, um, we've been able to do a bunch of things, but what really are the results or the consequences, impacts of actually having OSM as part of our curriculum? Well, we've been able to introduce and train over 1,400 students in OSM, our students have created over 85,000 chain sets and over 7 million edits. Um, the Humanitarian Mapping Society at GW 
HMSGW is a student-led organization that was formed from students that came through our program. And they wanted to do this mapathon thing for humanitarian good on a more regular basis. So since about 2014, I believe when they formed, 2013 perhaps, uh, they've been hosting mapathons on campus every single semester and engaging the GW community and the Washington community at large whenever they're able to um, be able to come on board. I'm out of time, so I'm gonna go very quickly. Teach OSM, um, the Teach OSM was stood up uh, at our conference table, four of us sat around our table and literally put content to um, a GitHub repository and then stood up the first instance, instance of Teach OSM. And then last but not least, Youth Mappers. You'll hear more about Youth Mappers later on from Dara and Sophia. But very briefly, GW is one of the founding universities of this um, network of university chapters. And HMSGW, uh, our student mapping organization, actually was a founding chapter of this organization. In fact, with the blueprint of what a youth mappers chapter is today. So I'm out of time. So thank you very much for your attention and hope you enjoy the rest of the talks today.